Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, as you know, I'm Erica Spindler, and um, I've been writing since, well, let's see, my first book came out in like 88. I've written 30 books, 31 books, something like that. 30 Seconds Coming Out, The First Wife is what it's called. Um, I really got into writing, not by mistake, but by chance, almost. Um, I'd always loved to read, big, big reader, um, but always thought I was going to be an artist, and that's what I studied for. So uh, I'd finished graduate school. I had a teaching job in the art department at uh, SLU lined up for the fall, and I got a really bad summer cold. Um, I stopped at the K&B drugstore, and um, if, I know you're smiling. We all remember K&B, the purple and the white. Um, I stopped, and the cashier dropped a free romance novel into my shopping bag. Well, at the time, I, I was, you know, I thought to myself, I'm not going to read this. I've ne I'd never read a contemporary romance. No, those are the line romances, like Silhouette and Harlequin. Um, and, but I just really felt so awful, just so stuffed up. I didn't want to talk to anybody, so I go home. I'm sitting there feeling horrible, and there's that book. So I pick it up, I start reading, and I just became just obsessed with romance novels. And I started reading, reading, reading romance novels. This one happened to be by Nora Roberts, who I had never heard of at the time. It was a long time ago, but she's gone on to become a very, very big, big star in the literary field the genre fiction field. Anyway, so sometime during this reading, I went on a reading frenzy then, um, trying to find as many Nora Roberts books as I could, and then I branched out into other romances. And sometime during that, I just you know, felt this real urge to try to write a book. So that's what I did. I tried. And I tried, and I tried. Um, it really took over my life. I became obsessed with the idea of being a, a published author. My family thought I was crazy because all my life I'd wanted to be an artist. And here I was writing, as they called them, the little books. So anyway, I was teaching. I was teaching art. Uh, we were trying to start a family. Um, and I was trying to become a published author. My third book actually sold first. Um, and then I went back and revised my second, and it ended up selling. And my first book is still in a drawer. So is there, are there any? <laughs> I nicknamed it Fatally Flawed because it really is fatally flawed. I used to pull it out every once in a while when I was still writing romance and kind of dust it off like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. I'm a much better writer than when I started. I can fix this, but there's no fix in Fatally Flawed. I mean, that's just so... Um, but uh, then, you know, I yeah, wrote 13 romances uh, over a couple different lines, is which, what they call the different, you know, lines of romances. And, you know, in that, during that time, all of a sudden then I was wanting to tell a bigger story again. It was like I wanted to tell a story about the relationship between siblings and a, a mother and a child or a father and a son or what other kind of relationships other than mainly the romantic relationship. So um, I decided to do that, and um, it, it ended up selling it. Um, I got in on the ground floor of a new imprint called Mira Books, and that book was titled Red. I brought a few copies today. I have a few copies of books to sell if anybody wants any. But um, that book was a very big success. I sold it. It was a success, and it was a, but it was a success of... Not like John Grisham here or Nora Roberts here, but in Japan of all places. So that that book actually took me to Japan. Um, they turned it into manga series and then a, so, a daytime drama, a soap opera in Japan, which was just it was just a major hoot. It was it was so much fun. Um, so they sent me over there to tour and um, visit Japan and do book signings. And so the, that was, you know, it opened me up culturally to something I'd never experienced before. I mean, the, the Japanese people, their, their culture is just so different. Their, and their, their view of authors and books, they kind of look up to authors like they're like really special people, you know? And they're like, um, it's like celebrity arriving. You know, when I arrive at 
Barnes and Noble, I assure you, I am no celebrity. You know, <laughs> they put me in the front with a little table and chairs, and and uh, but in Japan, they just almost revere their author. So it was it was truly star treatment. But they were all very kind and and very welcoming and truly very generous people. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and you know. I just came to writing suspense. I write suspense now, and I'm starting to branch out in, in a, another little uh, kind of direction. Um, but I, I came to the suspense kind of by uh, by happenstance. No, I don't want to say that. It isn't happenstance. I followed my muse. I always think of my career as... You know, some people are just, you know, they're just so organized and they, they make out a plan and they follow the plan. My husband's one of the guys who make a plan, work the plan, right? <laughs> Instead, I'm like the rabbit in a maze or something. Oh, you know, or the dog after a squirrel. It's like squirrel, squirrel. So what happened was the squirrel was suspense. I, I, I'd read it. I'd loved it, but I hadn't thought about writing it. And I wrote a book called Forbidden Fruit. And I just happened to include a, a small element of suspense. Um, and when I was writing those parts of the story, I was just loving it so much, just having such a great time, that the next, then I had to come up with another book. And I was like, oh, I want to do more of that. I want to do more of that. Um, and so my books really went from romance to kind of dramatic woman in jeopardy melodrama to true suspense to thriller and now it's kind of curved more around um, to encompass relationships a little more um, and um, kind of the 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 idea of of foreboding kind of suspense less less cops and and CSI stuff and more you know, a woman in danger, uh, families don't seem like what they are, secrets, betrayals, it, that kind of thing. So um, that's what's going on now with my work. Um, I'm also working on a, um, a uh, new series of books. It's, you're the perfect group to talk to this about, but it's, it's, uh, it's good against evil. It's um, a, a Christian based, but not, it's still secular. Uh, literature. Um, so really setting up the idea it's going to be a series of, you know, the, the big battle, you know, the, the battle for the world has begun and, and, you know, kind of an Armageddon thing, good, good against evil. Having a ball with it, have f finished the first book, haven't sold it yet, it's just at my age, with my agent now, so I don't know where it's going to go or when it's going to be published, but that's, that's what I'm doing right now. What's the name of it? 